Welcome to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday. As you can see, we're in the season to get this tree up, and we just started. We haven't yet got all the decorations on it, but it is that time of the year, time of the year. Most people play Christmas music as well, so happy Thanksgiving to everyone. We look forward to the Christmas season, the wonderful time with family. Well, this is an announcement that for the next few, or actually maybe at least six, possibly eight uh, Adventures in Grace, you're going to hear it over and over again at the beginning of the broadcast. With the busy schedule we've had and all that's getting ready to take place at uh, Christmas time, the holiday season, I'm going to take off just a few of these videos. And we're going to start because it's time again to get into what is Christianity. For some of you that have been following us, we did a pretty extensive series on that a little bit over a year ago. And we're going to bring in for the first five or six videos, maybe a couple of more, we're gonna bring in those videos from over a year ago. And then I'll jump back in and uh, be doing those videos live with you again. We just wanna let you know, this is a great series. And oh, by the way, if you're kinda of tired of this shirt, I am kinda of advertising tonight. Our book is finished. Our book is up on Amazon. We've ordered copies of it. We're gonna get it any day. So people will be able to order from our ministry. It's $10. What's next, Papa? The subtitle is Enjoying Real Experiences with God. And so much of the book has to do with what is Christianity, the series that we're about to do. You can go on Amazon and get it for 15. Uh, right now, the ebook is also available and we'll be getting that link on our uh, website as well. So hey, have a great holiday season. I look forward to being back with you live, but you won't miss anything because the series we did a year ago, we're going to start right out with it. You're going to love every bit of it. Bit of it. We're going to see you soon. Hey, have a wonderful holiday season and send in your grace stories to jhmi at jimhockaday.com. We want to be flooded with grace stories in this holiday season. So many opportunities to get with people, to be around uh, circumstances where you need to lean on grace instead of leaning on your flesh, where you need to look for the influence of God because he's everywhere. Thank God Jesus is the reason for the season. Bless you guys. Welcome to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday. Looking forward to getting into our second video on what is Christianity. Wow, an intriguing subject, but it's a good one. Well, number one, we do these videos to encourage you to let Jesus come off the pages of your Bible and get into your life. And oh, we've got a great story for you today that's a real fun one. And we'll probably get another one about ice cream after I share this ice cream story. It seems like one ice cream story begets another ice cream story. Do you know that there's a truth right there? When you begin to hear people's testimonies, it opens up your mind. It opens up your heart. The past series we did was on imagination. And all of a sudden, you begin to see in your imagination and heart and mind... God doing things for you, and all of a sudden, those things began to come. You know, I love when Paul encouraged us and actually almost challenged us over in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think. Think. Think about think. Think. What does that mean? As you think, you see, and you hear, and God seeing and hearing. That's what we're getting into in just a few moments. It begins to produce so many wonderful experiences. Well, as God becomes real to you, faith then becomes also not just the written word of God, but the spoken word of God. Now faith becomes a part of your relationship where you're responding to him. I never thought that I was using faith when I responded to my dad when he was on the earth. He's up in heaven now, but times that we had and we did things, I just responded to him because number one, he was real. Number two, I, I knew him. Number three, I loved him. And as we spent time together, whoa, you know, we had experiences with one another, but I didn't have to contrive those experiences. I didn't have to work on those experiences. I could just be myself and experience my dad. Why? Well, because the relationship produced the experience. And if Paul was writing about my relationship with my dad, he would have said, by faith, Jim responded to Bill, and then he had this experience. Kind of sounds a little more simple than maybe what we've made it. 
Number three, take those experiences called testimonies and start sharing them. Wow, you'll get a crowd. Matthew 11, 27 to 30 is our text. It just kind of typifies the whole idea of what we're doing here with what is Christianity. And it says, now Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the son the way the father does, nor the, nor the father the way the son does. But I'm not keeping them to myself. I'm ready to go over them line by line with anyone willing to listen. Is that not amazing, everybody? That Jesus is ready to go over it line by line to help us to have the exact same experience with the Father that he had? And then he went on to say, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Look at what the hindrance to that relationship is. It's religion that will make you burned out, tired, and worn out. He said, come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. I want you to go over to John and chapter 5. Now, this is a story here of Jesus raising up that man at the pool of Bethesda. Now, you know, there's a lot of different things we could say about that. One is he obviously was led to that individual. You say, how come? Well, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost of power to go about doing good and healing to all that were oppressed of the devil. Acts chapter 10 and verse 30. But what we know is there were five porches full of people that were sick, waiting for the troubling of the water. How come Jesus didn't hold a crusade there and, and get them all to believe in him and then lay hands on them there? And the answer is because those people already chose their method of what they believed how healing would come to them. If they had to lay there year after year until the water was troubled and someone got them in first and they got out of that pool healed, that's what they were going to do. And you know Jesus was led to that one individual because here's the truth of the matter. If they had individuals with them that could throw them into the water so that they could be healed, guess what? Those same individuals could have taken them two or three miles out of town to one of Jesus' meetings and every single person that touched him was made perfectly whole and they wouldn't have to wait any longer. You know, we just don't barge in on where people are at. We preach the gospel, and if it brings a change of direction to the way they see things, and they're coming then to receive, then praise the Lord, they can be healed. But you know, sometimes, and I've found this to be true, if I'm just trying to barge the door down, break the door down, and make someone get healed, I don't have the same amount of success. You say, have you actually had some success that way? Yeah, I have. I've walked in certain places where I didn't care what anybody believed. I was going to get it for them. You say, what do you mean you walked in certain places? Are you not in certain places now? Well, some of those places you have to stay in that in order to stay in that, if you know what I'm talking about. Brother Hagen used to say, sometimes anointings you've walked in in the past, you'll have to go pick those back up and you'll have to start in a smaller atmosphere or smaller type of a building or meeting because you can turn a little a little rowboat faster than you can turn a big ship. And we're doing meetings called Healing by Design. We'll have actually a website out called Healing by Design pretty soon. And in those meetings, that's what they're set up for. To get with people, to work with people, to share things with them. Eventually, as we have our own building and we have a good 20, 30, 40, 50 people that we've taught to pray and, and carry the anointing and walk in the glory, those people will be there in, in between uh, teaching sessions, which the public will be made aware of, and people can come in off the street and we'll just minister to them, put the anointing on them. John Lake used to do this in his healing rooms, and he used to say, if you'll come at least 30 days. You'll walk out of here healed. He was so confident that he could put the presence of God on them each and every day for 30 days. And you wouldn't need 30 days before the power of God would register in your heart and mind and your body would be amended and well. Praise the Lord.
So we want to, we're, we're doing uh, this healing center and opening it up at the direction of the Lord. And I believe it's going to go to some pretty cool places because we're ended up when we have our own place. We're going to have a laboratory attached to the healing center, which we can verify with doctors, doctors verification for all the healings. And what is that going to do? It's going to challenge the Christian world that Jesus really is all they need. And then they can sing that song, I believe you're my healer and not lie about it. And it's going to also bring great news to the rest of the world that might have to rely upon, you know, some type of uh, medicine or vaccination that we're not sure what's actually in the vaccination. If there's another go of a virus here, there again, or what about people that just get themselves in trouble where there's nothing else the doctors can do? If they know that there's a place and we can use the verification to prove that it works, We'll have half the healing before they ever even get to the building. We'll have testimonies of people getting healed before we ever minister to them. Why? Just getting in the presence where they know God is healing and God is doing a work and there's verification to what we're actually saying. Their hearts will open up and God will flood their heart. I'm telling you, if we can get out of our own way, Jesus can do amazing things in our life today. Wow, that's some good stuff right there. Well, Jesus, here he is. He heals this man at the pool of Bethesda. Well, the guy gets up and it happened to be the Sabbath. And you know, Pharisees, Pharisee type people, they're too interested in trying to keep their law to even give praise to God for the healing. Boy, I've seen folks like that. They're going to they're gonna, uh, talk to you about how you did what you did and not even mention that the person's, uh, they're, they're healed over there. <laughs> You know, I mean, you're trying to tell me I didn't do it the way you wanted me to do it, but they're healed. Hello? Well, this is where we are. Passion translation. I like this. 19 and 20. Jesus defending himself when the Pharisees said, who do you think you are, man, making yourself God? Because what did Jesus do? He said, well, actually, my father's always working, and I too am always working, in response to them saying, why are you doing this on the Sabbath? He said, my father's working, and I'm working. Wow, that split hair right down the center, and they're ready to persecute him. They want to kill him, and they said, Jesus said, well, why are, you, why are you coming against me? Well, not because of what you did, but because of what you said. You being a man, make yourself God. And then Jesus responds, and he says, I speak to you timeless truth. The Son is not able to do anything from himself or through my own initiative. I only do the works that I see the Father doing. For the Son does the same works as his Father. Because the Father loves his Son so much, he always reveals to me everything that he is about to do. And you will be amazed when he shows me even greater works than these than you've seen so far. Wow. Let's just look at a couple of thoughts here because we're talking about Christianity. You mean you just don't do anything you want to do in Christianity? Well, here's the deal. Again, it's not about to adhering to any law. It's about relationship. And it's about how far you want to take your relationship. You know, people have all kinds of different perspectives in life that's due to uh, how they grew up, who they grew up around, what part of the country what part of the world, what their life was like, whether they had both parents in the home, whether the parents in their home was a godly home or an ungodly home. Maybe they only had one parent. Maybe they didn't have any parents. They were raised by their grandparents. All these kind of things affect the psyche of man. And when it comes to having a relationship with God, some people want like all of it and go as far as they can and have it all the time. And to that, we'd say, you know, bravo. Some are okay with just a little and having it every once in a while. And it all goes back to what you want because there's no test in the new covenant. Jesus took your test. He passed it with flying colors. Amen. And through the grace of God, you're free to have whatever kind of relationship with God you want. I remember my cowboy friend, B.J. Rickard and I, when we first met, and we started to, uh, he started to experience God in the meetings that I was in. And then his experiences became really awesome. 
and we started talking. We ended up doing a radio show. It's on my, my website, jimhockaday.com. All free downloads, 266 radio shows that we did together. And one of the first theories that he came up with was called the Ranger Theory. Again, we're talking about what? What is Christianity? And everywhere he went with his dog Ranger, which was a, a chocolate lab, and it was a female, because of how Ranger acted and interacted with BJ, everybody would always say, that's the smartest dog I've ever seen. And he would always defend dogs, plural, by saying, no, you know, she's not any smarter than any other dog. And everybody would say, oh, yes, she is. I mean, my dog doesn't do any of that. And BJ would always ask, well, how much time do you spend with your dog? And then they'd usually get a melancholy, kind of sad look on their face and say, well, I mean, I, you know, I mean, I, yes, I mean, I, I, he's, he's on a chain, but he has a really great, you know, dog house. And, and I'll go back there some and, and, and throw the, you know, stick around and we'll do a little fetch every once in a while. And then they'd ask BJ, well, how much time do you spend with your dog? And he said, well, ever since she's been a little pup, she's never left my side. And they say, well, how long did it take her to learn the difference between a Phillips screwdriver and a regular screwdriver? And BJ said it took four hours. Four hours, they'll say, because they can't conceive of actually spending that kind of time. And here's where uh, the way that he did life worked really well with experiencing God. You say, what do you mean? Well, he was an obsessive compulsive type of personality. So if we were going to have a cookie contest, he would on purpose try to make the biggest cookie the world's ever seen. And he would stay with it until he accomplished his task. Everything to him was about what he starts, he finishes, and he and he goes 100% until he's done. So he would have stayed there for 40 hours if Ranger, his dog, learning the difference between a Phillips screwdriver and a regular screwdriver would have been helpful for a rancher and a cowboy on a ranch, then he would have spent whatever kind of time he needed to have himself a little ranch hand, hello, and say, Ranger, go get the Phillips screwdriver. And Ranger would go to the tool chest and she would get the Phillips screwdriver and come back with it in her mouth. Well, that's very, very advantageous and helpful. We'll see an individual that doesn't think like that would think, oh my goodness, four hours. See, here's the theory. The theory is God is dog spelled backwards. Hello? Little, little, little play on words there. But you can have as much of God as often as you'd like and go as far as you want to go. And if you don't have very much, don't have it very often, and haven't really seen many accomplishments, well, that's not on God, that's on you. Now, don't feel so bad, because there's nothing about the religious training, most likely you've heard, that's going to share something like that to open up your heart and mind to the idea that, you mean I can have more? I, I, I can have God and experience Him more often? And I can go as far as I want to go, and there's no limits and there's no boundaries? See, maybe you haven't heard that before because everything about this world is limitation and boundary. I mean, think about it. As wonderful as mothers are, we only get to tell them they're wonderful once a year on Mother's Day. And as nice as it is to have a dad and to have experienced some wonderful things with dad, we can only tell them, thanks, dad, once a year on Father's Day. Are you seeing what the world does it conditions you not to go very far, not to think you can have very much, and not to think you can actually have it very often. So you just become grateful if you've even had an experience with God, even if it was a hundred years ago, because I had one. Well, folks, even getting born again is not what I'm going to say Christianity is. It's just the beginning of Christianity. It's the start. Like if you're in a race, you don't win a ribbon because you got into the starting blocks. You still have to hear the guy that's starting it say, take your mark, and then hear the gunshot, and then you got to come out of the blocks, and you actually have to run faster than everybody else to win the ribbon. 
Everything about Christianity is about the heart connecting to God and asking yourself the question, how much, how far, how often do I want this connection? And if I do want more, will it grow? And the answer is yes, by leaps and bounds. And the more it grows, the more you want. And the more you want, the more it grows. And that, my friends, is the addiction that God created. Not the addictions of this world, of the flesh and of the mind, of substance abuses and so on and so forth, but finding God loving God, finding grace, experiencing grace, wanting more of grace, and then even wanting to participate with grace for the next time and the next time and the next time. Wow, isn't that good? Listen to this grace story right here. It says, uh, my ice cream grace story. <laughs> Many years ago, my girlfriend broke up with me. Right after that, I went to McDonald's. When I went up to the counter to order, a girl working there offered me the vanilla ice cream cone. She was holding in her hand. It was a mistake from another order, so it was free. She handed it to me, and I enjoyed it. Vanilla is my favorite flavor. Anyhow, what a blessing. You are becoming the ice cream man of grace. Enjoy. <laughs> I really like that so much because that's exactly what happens. The more you hear it once, and all of a sudden your heart opens, and then you end up having mm, a, an ice cream story. Well, we love you all. We appreciate you watching. We're going to do so much more here and just go further. But uh, bring people over to Adventures in Grace on the YouTube channel and then subscribe. It is good to know how many are there, but we're not saying how many are there so that we can act like we're, we've done something or accomplished something. We want more people so they can have grace testimonies. For sure, by all means, our website has our email, jhmi at jimhockaday.com, and send us your grace story. Until next time.